But we're going to begin this half hour with a Today exclusive tied to the Cleveland kidnapping case. Just days after Ariel Castro committed suicide, NBC News has obtained video of Ariel Castro's interrogation, recorded just hours after his arrest back in May. NBC's national correspondent Kate Snow has more on this story. Kate, good morning to you. Good morning, Savannah. These interviews obtained by NBC News from a source familiar with the criminal investigation are four hours long. At times, the audio is a little unclear, but in those tapes, Castro details how he abducted and abused Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Gina De Jesus. Out of respect for the victims, NBC News is not showing Castro speaking out about the details of his crimes. NBC News also reached out to the lawyers for the victims to alert them to our report this morning. What we will be showing you this morning details Castro's long-held thoughts about suicide and provides new insight into how he says he avoided arrest over the years. From this moment on, I will not let you define me or affect who I am. That was Michelle Knight on the day her captor was sentenced to life in prison for unimaginable crimes that spanned over a decade. I spent 11 years in hell. Now your hell is just beginning. From the beginning, investigators never really had any question about Ariel Castro's guilt. Within hours of his arrest in May, he was ushered into this interrogation room and began admitting what he'd done. Your full name, sir? A handcuffed Castro calmly described how he abducted and abused his victims. Over four hours of tape, he rarely showed remorse, but at times was tearful. He also seemed surprised by what he'd gotten away with, describing a number of close calls over the years that easily could have led to his arrest. There were cameras, he told investigators, that should have captured him at Gina de Jesus' school just 15 mm -hmm. minutes before he abducted her. We could have broke the case right then and there. When he first kidnapped Michelle Knight, Castro said he had a girlfriend who'd visit the house. One day she noticed a TV on in the room where Michelle was secretly held. But no one found out his horrible secret for years, even when he says he used Amanda Berry's cell phone to call her mother and tell her Amanda was alive. What did you say to her mom? I think I said something. As I have her daughter. Think that she's okay. Think that she's my wife. You know? Something like that. Probably not the exact words. Yeah, that's right. Okay. What was her mom's response? I hung up. She wouldn't have a conversation. At this point, did anybody ever interview you or closely related to you? Closely related to you with the disappearance of Amanda? At that point? Yeah. Close to no. Nothing led us to talk to him, you know. There were no indications that we should go talk to him. We spoke with Vicki Anderson of the FBI back in May. We canvassed the neighborhood. We did all of those things. Nothing led us to Ariel Castro. Two hours into the interrogation, Castro, still handcuffed, ate a slice of pizza, then started to pace. How can I maneuver this? How can I get over these people? How can I manipulate the situation to my advantage? And the wheels are still turning and they keep going over and over in his head. And you see that in his body movements. Castro also talked about the day the women escaped. As his daughter, who was born in the house, grew older, she begged him to stop locking all the doors. And on that day in May, he left a bedroom door open. I know I left my guard out. That slip-up is how Amanda Berry made it to the front door and yelled for attention. I've been kidnapped and I've been missing for 10 years and I'm, I'm here, I'm free now. In addition to the interrogation video, NBC News also obtained two letters that Castro wrote to his children around Father's Day while he was in jail. I still can't believe what I did to put me in the situation that I'm in now, he wrote. Everything he has done is uh, indicative of a narcissistic personality disorder. He's self-centered, he's self-absorbed. It's all about him. When investigators first searched Castro's home last May, they also found a confessional note from 2004 in which he wrote about suicide. I want to put an end to my life and let the devil deal with me. What about suicide? You still... You know, you know, 
Castro was not on suicide watch in the state prison where he was being held, but was supposed to be checked by guards every half hour. Prison officials say they're investigating how he was able to hang himself, ending his life and his life sentence. In a statement, the county prosecutor who put Castro away originally called Castro a coward who couldn't take for even a month a small portion of what he had dished out for more than a decade. The message he said to other child kidnappers, you will not enjoy the captive side of the farce. It's so extraordinary to see these tapes. I mean, on the one hand, your stomach turns just yeah. to even hear what he has to say. And I'm, again, overwhelmed by the strength of these survivors. Is there something to be gained by looking at these tapes? I mean, do we learn anything by hearing his side of the right. story? I think the one thing we do learn, and, and you heard him say, there were missed opportunities. And, and maybe the lesson for all of us is when you see something, when you feel something about your neighbor, if you have a gut instinct, the FBI would say, act on it. They, they, they are waiting for tips from regular old people. And you heard Vicki Anderson, the FBI spokesperson in the piece, say, we had no idea that we should be looking into Ariel Castro. No one ever flagged him. One of the things that's so incredible is to hear him say that he is a victim. It makes you yeah. sick. There, there are a lot of parts of this tape that we did not air out of respect for the victims, in which he almost appears to blame them. He said they should never have gotten in my car. He says, let that be a lesson to other children out there. It, it's it's heinous stuff to some extent, um, but you know we, we also want to want to hear a little more about this man and understand sort of how this all happened. Okay, so it's great to have you here. Thank you so much.